There are people out there who shouldn't even be allowed to have children. So many sick, disturbed individuals who don't deserve to have a child in their home. Yet so often, these same people are the ones who go on to have those children. And instead of raising them in a kind, loving, and supportive home, they just decide that they don't want to be a parent anymore. And in this case, instead of taking the steps to do what's right, a mother chose to murder her toddler and treat her as if she was less than trash. But on this channel, we strive to give a voice to the voiceless, those who were taken advantage of in the worst way possible. But before we get into the case, I want to remind you all that I will be attending CrimeCon in Nashville this year, and if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you can get 10% off when you use code RACHELSHANNON at checkout. The tickets are selling out super fast, so I encourage all of you to get your tickets while you still can. I would love to see as many of you there as possible. It's going to be so amazing to get to meet you guys face to face. Let me know in the comments if I will see you there. With that out of the way, I am here to tell you the devastating story of Maha Hobbs. Maha Lee Hobbs was born on November 15th, 2017 to parents Alexis Nelson and Terrell Hobbs. Maha was described as a beautiful little girl from the moment she was born. She had tons of energy, she was happy, positive, and she was loved by absolutely everyone who met her. Pa? Any candy? Yeah, Papa. Telling lies? Yeah, Papa. Open your mouth. Ha, ha, ha. Ripping it, all of it. Take it all off. Good job. There you go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you got play food. You got play food. You got, yeah. You got, you got two more gifts over there. Want to open some more, boo boo? Yeah. You go pick it up. Thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, wait a minute. One more. Maha. Wait a minute, boo. Look. Maha. Look. Hey, boo boo. Open this one up, baby. Look at that one. Tear the paper. There you go, baby. Rip off the paper. You probably just took the ball. Oh, yeah, you would. Rip off the paper. At the time, Maha was living in Aurora, Colorado with her mother, Alexis. Meanwhile, her father, Terrell, lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. I believe Terrell also has another daughter with a different woman, but he may have more children. I'm not completely sure. I also do know that Terrell works as a professional fighter. I don't know the ins and outs of the relationship between Alexis and Terrell, but it appears that they were not together for long or at all after Maha was born. Unfortunately, I don't know all the details for where each family member lived or how long, though I believe Alexis's parents did live in Georgia, and I do believe that Alexis and Terrell did live in Georgia at some point, and I believe that is where Maha was born. So I'm not sure exactly how long Maha and Alexis had been living in Colorado. I don't know when they moved there, if they had lived anywhere else before. I don't know how much family support they had before moving there. I do believe Alexis was in school, so that might be why they moved to Colorado in the first place, but none of those details are really Really made available. What we do know is that Alexis was pretty much by herself in Colorado with all of her family living in a different state. Then, as we know, Terrell was also in another state. So, she was raising Maha by herself. It seemed that from the moment Alexis became pregnant, though, she wasn't sure what would happen with Maha. As I will mention in just a minute, Alexis wasn't in a good place when Maha was born. She wasn't even sure if she wanted to keep her. She was in school, she was living far away from everybody, and she didn't have the best financial situation. But after giving birth to such a beautiful little girl, she decided to keep her. Now, according to Terrell, Maha and Alexis came to visit him in North Carolina when Maha was about two years old. After that, for the six months that followed, Terrell stayed in contact with Alexis and Maha via FaceTime. Terrell loved being able to see his daughter on FaceTime, but after those six months, for the two years that followed, Alexis completely cut off contact with Terrell. She wouldn't call him and she wouldn't answer his attempts at contacting them. She wouldn't allow Maha to speak with her father any longer, 
So for two years, Terrell was not able to see or speak with Maha. Now, I know a lot of people will have their different opinions about Terrell and how involved he was in his daughter's life. I know a lot of people will say that he should have been a lot more involved, that him being involved could have prevented a lot of what happened, and I do agree. I know in retrospect, Terrell probably wishes that he could have been more involved in his daughter's life, but I do just want to say for now, we don't know the entire history of the relationship between Terrell and Alexis. We don't know why she moved. We don't know why Terrell didn't move with them. I do believe that that Terrell had his own family in North Carolina that he couldn't necessarily leave. So we don't know the entire history. I'm hoping more will come out eventually. But for now, what we do know is that Terrell wasn't as involved in his daughter's life as maybe he should have been. But the things that happened to Maha are because of Alexis's actions. Now, Alexis's lack of communication with Terrell wasn't out of the ordinary for her. Various members of Alexis's family all said that it was difficult to contact her and that she would often go a few weeks between calls or texts. In fact, when Alexis was pregnant with Maha, her family didn't even know. Like I said, Alexis wasn't sure if she was going to keep Maha, so she didn't feel the need to tell anybody that she was pregnant to begin with. Alexis's mother, Asia, said that on the day that Maha was born, she received a photo from Alexis via text with a message that read, quote, Meet Maha. She's 35 weeks, 5.2 pounds, born yesterday morning at 11.48 a.m. at 19 and a half inches in length. You would have known about her grand entrance sooner, but my original plan was to have her adopted by a family more suitable to provide for her without struggling. Though I still believe that open adoption is the best move for her to never need for anything and myself so I may finish school, have a career with benefits, and my family nearby before starting a family, she's here and ungiveuppable. So, meet your first grandbaby. From there, as far as Alexis's family knew, Alexis raised Maha to the best of her abilities and provided her the best life she could. Now, Alexis's father, Micus, stated that he tries to call Alexis whenever he can, but she hardly ever answers. However, Alexis's mother, Ashia, says that she will hear from Alexis via text a few times per week. She tries to FaceTime her a few times a month, but she also rarely ever answers her calls. Ashia also mentioned that for about the past year or so, when Alexis does answer FaceTime calls, she rarely ever lets her speak with Maha. That was unusual because when Maha was younger, Alexis was good about letting her family see her, especially because they did live out of state and again, that was really the only way they would get to see her on a regular basis. The last time Maha's grandfather, Micus, saw Maha was when Alexis called him on May 3rd, 2023. The call was very short and in that call, Alexis told Maha to quote, tell granddad hi, tell him you love him, tell him bye. That same day on May 3rd, Alexis sent Ashia a video message which shows Alexis and Maha with Alexis directing Maha to say hi and goodbye to her grandmother. Alexis's sister, Mercedes, also got a call from Alexis on that same day. That call only lasted for a few seconds, and once again, it was Maha quickly saying hello to her aunt. Then, Ashia started to become concerned with some of the things that Alexis was saying. By May 25th, 2023, Ashia called Alexis asking if she needed help setting up a savings account for Maha. But Alexis said no, that she was already getting help from a couple that she knew. But after that call that same day, Alexis texted her mother saying, quote, My rent has gone up again, so rehoming, and I've been looking at fostering. To this, Ashia asked Alexis what she meant. She asked her daughter if she was referring to Maha, her human daughter, or a pet. Mind you, Alexis didn't have any pets that Ashia knew about, so this text was very confusing. Normally, people aren't going to talk about rehoming their human child. That's usually a term that's referred to when you're trying to rehome your pet. However, Alexis did not text her mother back to clarify what she meant. After hearing about this, Ashia mentioned to Mercedes, her other daughter and Alexis's sister, about Alexis saying that she was going to rehome Maha. 
So Mercedes reached out to Alexis about this and Alexis told her sister that she did actually do a closed adoption, but she would not provide any additional detail about said adoption. Obviously, this sent a huge red flag to Ashia, so after hearing about this on May 30th, 2023, Ashia called the Aurora Police Department asking them to do a welfare check. She said that she was concerned about Alexis putting Maha up for adoption and was worried for Maha's overall well-being. By around 1 p.m. on May 30th, police showed up to Alexis's residence to check on Maha. When speaking with Alexis, she actually told officers that Maha was not there because she had given up custody through a closed adoption. She told the officers that the adoption went through an agency called Adoptions with Love and even gave officers the number to that agency. So, of course, police called the number and spoke with the director of the program and gave them Alexis's name. Of course, the director found no record of Alexis and had no idea of any involvement in any sort of adoption. They then went ahead and put Alexis and Maha's information into the general Colorado court systems database to see if maybe Alexis got the agency wrong or something like that but they found absolutely no record anywhere of any adoption. After this, officers went back to Alexis's residence and told her that adoptions with love had no record of any adoption. To this, of course, Alexis changed her story. She told officers that she did contact Adoptions with Love, who then provided her a list of other adoption agencies. Through that list, she came in contact with a woman named Janet Dunn, who facilitated the adoption to an unidentified couple. She said that she met with Janet in West Denver on May 4th, but couldn't specify an exact location. Alexis did not know the name of the agency that Janet worked for, nor did she have any contact information for her. All of the answers Alexis gave were extremely vague, not providing anything specific or useful that could help find Maha or prove her story. She also did not have any paperwork related to the adoption, saying that she either deleted the information from her email or threw away any physical documents relating to the adoption because she didn't want her family to find Maha. Alexis did say that she may still have some of the emails from Janet in her deleted folder and allowed officers to search her phone, but of course, there were no emails relating to any sort of adoption. Officers also looked through the photos on Alexis's phone, and to their surprise, they found that there were absolutely zero photos of Maha on her phone. She completely wiped her phone of anything that had to do with her daughter. While in that apartment, officers asked if they could look around real quick and Alexis agreed. When searching throughout the unit, officers noticed a complete lack of any children's items. There were no toys, no children's clothes, no blankets or stuffed animals that would belong to a child. Maha's room was completely empty. No bed, no dresser, no nothing. In her room, police did notice that the carpet looked dirty with various kinds of stains all over the place, but they couldn't quite identify what caused those stains. In that home, there were no signs that a child had ever lived there. No pictures of her on the fridge, no children's drawings, absolutely nothing that indicated that a child had ever stepped foot in that apartment. Because of all of this, officers knew that something really sketchy was going on. They confiscated Alexis's phone for further examination, and they went ahead and got back into contact with Ashia, who told them more detail about what we had already discussed. How Alexis was hard to contact, how Alexis didn't even know if she wanted Maha when she first had her. How she mentioned the adoption to her super casually, never saying like, hey, I have an appointment with the people on this date, make sure you say goodbye to Maha, you probably won't see her again because she's going to a new family nothing to say that, hey, this is going to happen. It's almost like that nine months that she just kept her pregnancy to herself, she also kept this adoption to herself as well until Maha was already gone. This was all 
just so strange to her family and to authorities. Police also contacted Terrell, who said that he hadn't been in contact with Alexis or Maha for two years. He did say, however, that he didn't know about any adoption arrangements. He also said that he wouldn't have approved an adoption if Alexis did mention it to him. In Colorado, both parents who are listed on the birth certificate must consent to giving up the child for adoption, and both parents must complete counseling before the child is adopted out. Obviously, if Alexis had Maha and didn't know who the father was and had never figured it out, then she might be able to give up her baby without the father's consent. But in this case, Maha's father was known. Knowing that, it's very unlikely that Alexis could have legally adopted Maha out given that not only did Terrell not know, but he also wouldn't have given consent if he did know. With all of this very sketchy information coming to light, police did canvas the entire apartment building and spoke with anyone who could have information regarding Maha's whereabouts. During this canvas, officers came into contact with a building maintenance worker, Nick, who said that he had been in Alexis's unit on May 5th for a biannual inspection. So it doesn't seem like something that Alexis was really warned about. This was something that happened biannually. She probably knew the date that it was going to happen ahead of time, but probably forgot about it closer to when it was actually happening. Now, on May 5th, this took place, I believe, when Alexis was not home. When Nick entered the apartment, he found that the door to Maha's room was connected to the bathroom door on the opposite side of the hall, preventing it from opening. So basically, the bedroom door was shut, and the bathroom door was connected to that shut bedroom door via a cord that was wrapped around the door handles so that the doors would not open. On the other side of those doors, he heard the sound of a TV playing, and it sounded like it was coming from Maha's room. Nick did cut the cord to get the door open, but when he tried entering the bedroom, the door was actually locked. At that time, Alexis noticed that Nick was in her apartment, so she yelled at him through a baby monitor, saying to get out. Of course, after that, he left the apartment. Clearly, Something concerning is going on in that apartment, and Nick was very off-put by this entire thing. You would think that if a mother truly loved her child but felt like giving her up for adoption was the best thing for the child, that she would have kept at least something to remember her by. A framed photo, one of her baby toys, a blanket, something, anything. But there was none of that. Clearly, Alexis wanted nothing to do with Maha, wanted no sign of her in that home or on her phone. That was not the behavior of someone who loved and cherished her precious baby. After police initially confiscated Alexis's phone, the next thing they did was a more intensive forensic search of Alexis's cell phone, and of course, what they found was disturbing. On Alexis's Google search history, officers found that on May 2nd, Alexis made searches for can you overdose from melatonin and can you overdose from Xanax. They then found multiple videos in her phone where Maha appeared to be saying goodbye to different family members. Again, as we stated earlier, Mercedes received one of those videos on May 3rd. So, put two and two together, and it appears that Alexis was already planning on how she was going to kill Maha by overdosing her. Then, she had Maha take videos where she said goodbye to her family, with Maha, of course, not knowing that her own mother was about to end her life. Using all of the information that they have gathered up to this point, investigators were then able to obtain a search warrant for Alexis's apartment. Shortly after beginning their search, an officer opened a door to a utility closet located on the outside patio of the apartment. Upon opening that door, the officer stated that he immediately was hit with a distinct odor that he knew was the smell of decomposing flesh. In that closet, they finally found some of Maha's personal belongings. They found a bunch of boxes as well as different clothes and toys, all that appeared to be Maha's. After moving some of those boxes out of the closet, officers found a big shopping bag that contained a plastic bag inside of that other bag. 
At this point, the smell of human decomposition got even stronger, becoming absolutely overwhelming as they opened the bag. And inside that bag, officers found what appeared to be burnt human remains. The officers notified the county coroner's office, who arrived shortly after. When they opened the bag and officially inspected the remains, they found several fragments of bones as well as what appeared to be a small rib cage. All of those bones were consistent with the size that five-year-old Maha would have been. After finding these charred remains, detectives then went into the fireplace located in the living room adjacent to the patio. Obviously, if they found burnt remains in the home, and they see a fireplace, that's going to naturally be the place that they look next. They noticed that the fireplace appeared to have been used recently, and in that fireplace, they found a bunch of stuff that had been burned, and among their various findings, they discovered multiple bone fragments, as well as what appeared to be a rib, and a scapula bone. Of course, after finding these remains, they were sent to the medical examiner's office to be examined, and it was found that the bones are consistent with Maha. However, they do want to confirm their suspicions to be absolutely sure. They did run a DNA test, but we don't yet know the results of that DNA test yet. It's been about eight months at this point, so I don't know when we will know, but the police say that they are highly confident that these remains will belong to five-year-old Maha. As the investigation continued, uh, we prepared and secured uh, several warrants, and a search warrant was executed at the apartment. Sadly, last night, as you know, our, our, our little beautiful little girl that if you see that little picture of her um, we believe that we actually found her we found remains that believe uh, that we believe to be that of a, a young child uh, and unfortunately because of the conditions of those remains uh, a positive identification uh, could not be made here are these cases involving little children I know it impacts our investigators I know it impacts our community and so myself and uh, Chief Hildebrand actually responded to the scene last night, and I can just tell you it was, it was tough to see uh, our cops that had to find that uh, little angel in the condition they found her in. And we're highly confident that this is going to end up being our, our missing uh, child. It is clear to investigators that Alexis was simply tired of being a mother and she didn't want Maha around anymore. So instead of reaching out to Terrell and seeing if he would take her or her parents or actually setting her up for adoption, she murdered her and burned her remains to try and cover for her actions. Then she hid those remains alongside all of Maha's toys and other belongings. As of right now, we don't know her official cause of death, and I don't know if we will ever know due to the fact that the remains were destroyed by a fire. But from those Google searches, we can reasonably deduce that she was probably overdosed on something. But because we don't have the DNA test results back at this time, Alexis Nelson has been arrested and charged only with child abuse, tampering with a deceased human body, and tampering with physical evidence, and making false statements to police. She was given a bond of $2 million, which she has not posted, so she is currently awaiting a trial in jail. Investigators have said that they are confident that murder charges will soon come. So, as of right now, that is all we know about this case. As I stated, police are confident that those remains belong to Maha and that she was murdered by her own mother. I know that this is a more recent and ongoing case, but as soon as I saw this one, I knew I had to cover it. It's just so devastating that a mother can look at her baby and make the conscious decision to take her life. Then, when she's dead, she burned her baby's body like it was nothing. Maha deserved so, so much more. She deserved a mother who loved her. She deserved to live her life and grow up knowing that she was loved by everyone around her. Instead, she got a mother who wanted to give her away from the moment she found out she was pregnant. 
But instead of doing what was right and giving Maha to a family that would love and cherish her, she kept her. And instead of raising her and giving her the life she deserved, she took her life after five short years. And afterwards, she treated her like trash. I cannot fathom why, again, she did not just reach out to Terrell. She didn't reach out to her parents and see if anybody else could take her. Because if those around her knew that it was this or her being in the arms of a loving, caring person, then I'm sure someone would have taken her. I'm sure someone would have given her the life that she deserved. But instead, Alexis just decided... I don't really want to be a mom anymore. I'm sick of this. So she most likely overdosed her own daughter and then burned her remains in a fireplace. That is the most horrendous way I've ever heard of a parent treating their child's remains. It's horrendous. It's devastating. And of course, my heart absolutely goes out to everyone who loved and cherished Maha. I don't yet know when the trial will take place or even if there will be a trial, but if more comes out about this entire situation, I will keep you all updated on any new information that comes out. If there's a lot of information that comes out, I will just make an entirely new video, or if not, I will just update the description box below or do a pinned comment or something like that. I am so curious to know if there was any history of abuse or neglect. Was CPS ever called on the family? Did Maha ever go to school, like preschool? Were there ever any red flags? I don't even know if Alexis worked, and if she did, who took care of Maha while she was gone? I also want to know more about the relationship between Terrell and Alexis. Was Terrell just a father who didn't want to take care of Maha and so he just wasn't around? Or did Alexis take Maha and moved against Terrell's will and he didn't really know what else to do because he does have his own daughter in North Carolina? There is so much here that we don't know and I do really hope we find out more as this case progresses. Unfortunately, there has not been any new reporting on this case since it first happened. The most recent article I've been able to find was from July or August of 2023. So I hope that after the DNA comes back as belonging to Maha, there is some more movements and more updates in this case. And of course, when that happens, you will all be the first to know. But that is all I have for today's video. And now I want to know what you all think. Why do you think this happened? Do you think Alexis really thought that police would believe her insane story? Do you think that there will be a trial and do you think we'll find out more about the family dynamics? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions for a case that you would like to see covered on this channel, make sure you fill out the Google form, which is listed down below. With that, hope you guys have an amazing week, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!